All right, guys, welcome back to the Mary Boozers channel. Today, we're going to be working on our Tiger Cat again. We're going to get the decals on, and then we're going to show you some airbrushing techniques to make this airplane look older and weather, just like a real one. We're going to get down to the bench now and get started putting this decals on. One of the tools I use to put decals on is a hot iron. This is actually a hobby grade hot iron. Um, it really helps to stick the tool or stick the decal down when you do this. Gets it into all the cracks and the heat really helps it not fly off when the airplane's flying. All right guys, so on your hot iron, I just like mine a little over one. Each iron's gonna be a little different. You really don't want this very hot. You want it to where you can touch it to your hand and it's hot, but not to where it's so hot that you're gonna burn yourself with it. You'll start to bubble the foam if you get it too hot on your settings. So like I said, just warm. So we're going off of our sticker sheet showing us where to place them. I've already peeled this star and bar off. We're gonna get down here on it. We're gonna get it lined up straight. We're gonna apply the decal. All right, so we like where that is. We're gonna take this and just kind of start working it in. Now, we're gonna grab our little iron and just rub it nice and gently just to help this kind of stick right at first. We're not gonna go too crazy with this just yet until we pull the plastic off. See, I've got my iron just a little hot right now because I can see the bubble starting to form. You don't wanna get this too hot. Okay, now, grab the corner of your plastic. One corner, corner, any corner and you're gonna fold it on itself and just slowly peel back. Don't go too fast. See this one's starting to lift a little bit. Reach over there and push it down. We just haven't got it really hot yet. I like to go one more pass over it after we get this on here. We're not gonna show you every decal on here, guys. It'll take all day, but we wanna show you just kinda how to properly put these on here. If you just stick them on, they're gonna blow off and wrinkle. So now that we've got it on here, you see this crack, we can take this iron and work that sticker right into that crack. And so your panel line stays there. See that? And there's another panel line right here. If we work across here, we can get it stuck right down in that panel. If you stick it good, you'll also notice that that edge will, will turn to the color of the airplane. Work that one right into the crack. You'll start to see the foam actually through the decal when you know you're getting it really good and stuck. Right in that crack. Once again, not so hot I can't touch it with my hand. All right, see how well that's stuck down, guys? Nice and straight, looking good. Let's get on to some more of them. I'm gonna try and skip some of the smaller ones that are gonna bore you. When we do the larger ones, I'll show that again. All right, guys. Now we're gonna put the G142 on the other wing. Like I said, we're gonna come down, line it up on that little panel line right there. I'm gonna go a little farther up. All right, I'm gonna stick it there. Start working my way out. These graphics are very forgiving. If you get a bubble in them, you can really iron them out pretty easily. You want to get it as flat as possible. See, I just bubbled that one. But you can kind of work them right out. They're very forgiving graphics. Take a little bit of heat. Let's go over them just lightly to get that preliminary sticking. Find us an edge to grab, start rolling it off. You want it to come straight back. Watch your corners. That's where it's gonna wanna grab at. Like I said, they're not completely stuck until you really hit these with some an iron. But I mean to tell you, when you iron them, they are stuck forever. I 
I kind of like them though because it makes it a little easier if you put it on a little wrong. You can get them off without tearing the paint off of this airplane. A lot of the old stickers, when you stuck them, if you pulled them up, you were repainting stuff. These are a little more forgiving until you put the heat to them. Work your way back. All the way off. All right. Now we take our iron again. Make sure it's not too hot. And just start getting them really pressed in there. You'll actually see around the edges where they start sticking. And right in those cracks, you can really see it. Now you can tell right here there's something that's an imperfection in the foam. You can't actually get that out. That's a mold line. And you'll actually see the little five dots from where the mold injected at. So yeah, work all the way around. Get them nice and stuck. Same thing again. There's another mold injection right there. You can actually see that one really pronounced because it sucks them down so well when you do this. Nothing you can really do about that. It's just kind of part of foam planes. Beats the heck out of having to sit here for four months building it though. All right, guys, we'll get down to the table, get some other stickers on, and we'll be back with you. We've got most of the graphics on now. Now we're gonna show you another technique that my father's been doing for a while, where we put rivets, rivets in using a Sharpie. Well, it's not actually a Sharpie, it's actually a pen that has this point on it. Pretty much a Sharpie. <laughs> and, and pretty much a Sharpie, yes, but at the same time, it's a pointed pen like this. You can find one anywhere. Okay. I do use Sharpies on other things, but now I'm just going to show you how I apply them. I do not go scale on these. I'm not going to the scale masters, so it's just... A simple process of going down the pre and I'm going to show you over the insignia here the way I do it I just take it and go down through there you can go down you will not see these if you stand in five foot from the airplane but if you look at it it will just give you that extra look some people like them some people don't that's up to you but that's as simple as it is you can do, if, if you don't want like the little, I'm actually putting a hole in the foam. If you don't want to do that, you can go ahead and use just a real good sharp. The one I found the best is this one here. Make sure you got a brand new one and you can just do the holes, but uh, whatever way you want to do it. Uh, what I want to do is show you some of the other aircraft that we've done so you can have a better view of what one is looks like finished. And we'll come back to this one when we get it all done and we'll show you a final product on Here's it. Here's our Goshawk. I've seen it in our earlier video. Now we went kind of crazy and this one's, I mean, it's covered in them, but I, it really adds a layer of scale detail to these airplanes that I love. And it just takes a little time, a little effort, and you too can have one that looks like this. Okay guys, so I've kind of finished the end of the wing tip here with the rivets. The only time I draw a panel line or make a panel line stand out is on the, the insignias. If you'll notice here, I'll take this right here and I'll just draw that line right across that insignia. And that's the only place I put it, okay? Same thing would happen coming across here. I put that on there, and the only place I will draw the panel line is across the insignia. Very lightly. And then it comes out and looks like that. So let's get in here close and show you kind of what's going on here. So, and that was with just a regular fine-tipped Sharpie is what I did that way. So it's gonna come out like this over the whole airplane, as you can see. Here's the part we haven't done. It really adds a lot to the airplane when you look down at it. We're gonna keep going on it. We'll get back to you in a while. Right, guys. Well, we've got the dots done on both wings. As you can see, the rivets are on there. 
really add something to the model to do this. Now we're gonna get ready to add some exhaust stains on here, and I'm gonna show you how I do it with my airbrush. Here's the small compressor I use and the airbrush that comes with it. The one thing I have added is a moisture trap on the bottom. I'm gonna have a link to the Pilot Ryan and Captain Mike Amazon page. He's put this air compressor on there. And then I also use the Tester's Black. This seems to work really well for doing any of the black on the airplane. And then I use the Vallejo color mixes. I'll get you a, a shot of each one that I'm actually gonna use. Here's the zinc chromate. I use this underneath the airplanes and the wheel wells and such. Um, we'll get you the exact colors we're using in the video as we go. All right, guys. Now we've got our airbrush set up. I run mine around 40 pounds. Get you a blank piece of paper to kind of test with. Get that splatter out first. Now we're gonna move over to the airplane. I take and I put a little bit down inside where the air's not gonna reach. And now I'm gonna take it and come straight back with it. Just like the air would be moving is what we're trying to do. We're gonna start with the black. And we're gonna just kind of work our way back right now. Hanging up on the prop. Let me get my cord. We want it nice and dark up here in the front. And as it goes back, it gets lighter. Take a back look. Now, I'm going to take it over to this other side and remember, mirror it as best as I can. So I'm going to shoot a little down inside and then I'm going to start working my way back with it. This is what's called a single staged gun that I'm using right now. As you hear it, every time I pull the trigger, it starts spraying. There's also a dual action where you'll be pulling the handle just barely back and it's going to spray air only. When you pull it the rest of the way back, it introduces all the air. I've always done pretty good with a single. I never really enjoyed the doubles. Some guys do though, but for what I'm doing, this works really good. So I'm just going to take a peek at it, make sure it looks good. I think I could use just a hair more over here. And now we're going to switch to another color. All right, guys, in between uh, your colors, you need to pick up some isopropic alcohol, put a little bit in your airbrush, Vallejo water-based paint and Tester's water-based paint both break down with alcohol. So that thins it out. I like to take and put a little in my airbrush and shoot it out. This helps kind of clean it out between your colors so you're not mixing a lot. On your exhaust colors, black and the grays and the brown, you're not going to have to worry too much about this. The colors don't really hurt each other too much. So once you get that out of there, make sure the excess is out. Spray it till it comes out dry. And now we're going to put our next color in. All right, guys, our next color is going to be light gray by Vallejo. I love this paint. It comes pre-mixed in the bottle straight to go in your gun. When you're running your guns, don't fill them all the way up. You never need that much paint. I'm going to take a look in there. This is how much I'm going to be using this time. Just a little bit in the bottom. A little goes a long way on these airbrushes. I'm gonna take it and clean it out here on this. Set my adjustment in the back. Get it to where a little's coming out. And all we're using here is a light gray. I'm gonna start about this far in and start shooting me a little gray. This simulates that this was getting very hot. You don't need a lot of the gray. That's plenty. Shoot the other side real quick. Actually, I'm going to put a couple more squirts right there. Here we go. Little goes a long way. You could have stopped at the step we did before with the uh, black. A lot of guys just stop at the black. I just think this really adds a little extra layer to it, doing these next two colors. All right, guys, I'm gonna switch to the next color. We'll be right Our back. next color is gonna be Vallejo's Middle Stone. We're gonna go on and put a little bit of this in here. A 
couple drops. That's probably good right there. Just to where it starts coming up in the bowl. Like I said, you don't need a lot of this paint, guys. Uh, it's always easier to put more in here later than put it back in that bottle. So I'm gonna adjust my air again before we get over there. Always use a blank uh, piece of paper too to kind of adjust your stuff. All right, now we're gonna start spraying some of this in here. If you ever look at a real picture of an airplane, the exhaust stains aren't actually just black. They're a couple different colors. And this makes them look like they got really hot as it was coming out. I may tone this down just a hair with a little bit of black over it in a minute. We're gonna take and come over on this side. like that guys. Okay guys, a long day, but we finally got all the graphics on the airplane. We painted the airplane, we put the rivets on the airplane, and it's come out to be a pretty nice looking uh, project. So I think Wesley, all he has to do now is just fly the thing and show you how well it flies. Or me, I do fly the airplanes also. So uh, he does fly them also, but guys, uh, it's been a real pleasure putting this one together. The fit and finish on this airplane has been phenomenal. We've really been impressed with how the airplane actually came out. I mean, it's getting hard to tell these are foam airplanes anymore. It really is. Um, anyway, like and subscribe for more great YouTube videos. We look forward to bringing you more. We'll do the flight video soon on this. We're waiting on a new camera right now, so even better shots for you guys. All right, we're going to talk to you later. Still like the slow-mo, though. We'll, we'll still do the slow-mos. No problem. That's my favorite. <laughs> later. Later.